Hello, my nomies. I'm sitting inside this week's review vehicle, a 2015 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport all-wheel drive 2.0T. Oh my gosh, I got through it in one breath. I happen to love the color, but I can tell you outright that I didn't really take advantage of all the features in this particular package. MSRP, 38,000. 350 US dollars. I'm doing this review late in the day because the sun is set so it's cooler. My video is automatically cooler. I do have the car running with the AC not quite cranked all the way up, but I could if I wanted to, but I won't. I've got my butt chillers on. Love that feature in the summer. Trust me, the next time you get into your car and you go to flip the switch for a butt chiller and it's not there, you're gonna wish you had this car. I love the color. I've seen the color before and I find it rather elegant, different, nice. The interior, I feel, was designed stylishly as well. I didn't really see anything that jumped out at me as negative necessarily, or, or positive, I, I don't know. I, I don't really pay attention to design when it's not in my way. While I saw a few useful features or features that could be useful in certain situations, I wouldn't say that this vehicle was necessarily teched out. It was easy to handle and I could switch steering modes with the press of a button on the steering wheel between normal, sport, or comfort. I really couldn't tell you the difference between any of them. Although if I were to venture a guess, I'd say that you have to be an athlete in order to use the sport mode. If you're looking for any driver footage, watch our daily vlogs, because I vlogged this vehicle every day for a week. I did not use the heated steering wheel option, nor did I use the seat warmers, but Diana tells me that seat warmers are available in the back seat as well, and she used them because she's always cold. I don't understand it. We're talking about 90 degrees Fahrenheit weather and she's still freezing. Pretty much every option that I might have needed was at my fingertips. It wasn't too difficult to find, and I would say is relatively user-friendly, including the turn signal, which some people refuse to use. They put it there for a reason. I will say that I found it somewhat tricky to park, if only because it was very difficult to judge the size of the car, and I really wasn't seeing any assistance, apart from, you know, peering my head out the window when I had to roll it down, and then I broke a sweat, and that was no fun. But the backup camera will warn you if if there's something that's moving behind you and the side view mirrors also tilt down when you're backing up the side view mirrors also have warning lights in case there's someone in your blind spot or a vehicle with someone driving it it was really easy to open the trunk either from the fob or the trunk door itself you press a button and it opens up automatically and then you press another button and then it shuts you don't have to worry about straining yourself and breaking more of a sweat that you were breaking anyway. there's an eco driving mode a lock for the wheels which i was afraid to use because like what does that mean does that mean like all the wheels lock i don't want that there's a light brightness adjuster for the console or the dashboard or the dashboard in the console analog gauges by the way i've got a couple of digital readouts but not really a lot of useful information at a moment's notice for a glance when you look down to see you know how fast you're going but you can see other things like your range you've got an anti-skid mode you've got the ability to do something on an incline with the button that I was afraid to press. I'm kind of starting to feel like my dad when it comes to using computers. The ability to save the seat settings and positions for two drivers or one driver who happens to like to drive in two different positions. There's an emergency brake on the floor, which may bother you if you happen to have gigantic feet, which I don't. There's also a button that I believe will tell you if you're about to hit something when you're parking, but it never seemed to work for me. The nav system was relatively responsive and it has the built-in speed limit thing. I think that's kind of cool. Very, very easy. Very, very convenient. You also have a... Uh, compass. A compass is built into the rear view mirror. I knew it was called a rear view mirror, but uh, for some reason I couldn't remember what the compass was. Today I was on an on-ramp and I needed to accelerate quickly and this vehicle kicked into high gear like immediately. Well, maybe it wasn't high gear, but I'm saying that it had some get up and go and it went and I was happy. Oh, by the way, the built-in window shades in the back seat were a godsend. I'd say that for the most part, this vehicle was nice to drive. It was a great sound system, by the way. It was rich. That's the best word I could use to describe it. Like, it felt like I was in the middle of something and I didn't have to tweak anything in the audio settings. It was just working so well. It was immersive. We really didn't have a chance to use the panoramic roof window, unfortunately, because the sun makes things hotter and we don't like that. Well, 
we don't. The controls for adjusting the panoramic roof window are a bit tricky. Like when I try to open the shade, this part opens up. And I don't want this part to open up. I just wanted to open up the shade. Imagine if it was raining and then I got rained on. That would have been awesome. Another bonus that I felt was valuable, the car cooled down quickly, even if it had been sitting in the sun for a while. And I love that feature. There are plenty of accessible power options at your fingertips in the front, in the middle, and in the trunk. Just in case you're in the trunk and you need to charge something. It could happen. Now, I'd imagine it's for situations like when you tailgate, which you should also not do. Because, you know, you got to keep a safe distance from the car in front. What? Oh, that's another sports thing. I'm pretending to talk to a person who's not really there. You have audio features, phone features, steering features, all built into the steering wheel, and they're readily accessible at your fingertips. The driver's side has temperature control, which is separate from the passenger side temperature control, if you want it to be that way. And if you're in a family that fights with one another, there's a dual button. That's spelled D-U-A-L, not D-U-E-L. Never mind. So who do I believe this vehicle is for? A small family that's a growing family. Who is this vehicle not for, in my humble opinion? Someone who's looking for a teched out kind of car. Again, there were a lot of nice features that I didn't necessarily get to take advantage of, but I didn't really feel like it was a lot of features that would have been awesome. If I missed any aspect of this vehicle in this review, just remember it's based on my experience and I didn't mean to leave anything out. Shout out to all my supernomies who are pledging on a monthly basis. They get all of my video reviews ahead of time, plus 60 exclusive tech videos every month. That's a lot of videos. I'm gonna head home now, take some medicine, and get some well-deserved rest. Okay, maybe it wasn't well-deserved, but I, I need to sleep off this headache. At this point, however, I'm going to leave you to your own devices.